Today, I want to look at the difference between the traditional reorder point and the new demand driven materials requirements planning system and see which performs best and why. My name is Ken Titmus, and using Excel, I want to demonstrate using the same demand data the difference between reorder point and DDMLP, and then we'll compare the results. Here is the spreadsheet for the reorder point which we will look at in more detail just now. We will be running the simulation over five weeks or 35 days. And to make things more interesting, I will be using a random number generator to determine the demand on each day. The demand will increase slightly from zero to 12 in the first week, up to zero to 20 in week three, and then back to zero to 12 in week five. This is the spreadsheet for the DDMLP simulation, which we will go through in more detail later. So let's have a look at the reorder point example. Here is the traditional diagram for a reorder point system. Let us say this SKU is at a retail outlet, which can be replenished in one day from a distribution warehouse. So the lead time for replenishment is one day, and with the average daily usage of six, the demand in the lead time is therefore six units. When we order, we order enough for two days, in this case, 12. In the past, we have calculated the standard deviation on our demand, and it's around five. We've been requested to provide a service level of 98%, which means we will use a safety factor of 2.05. Then 2.05 times the safety deviation of five gives us just over 10 we decide to err on the safe side and set the safety stock level at 12 or two days average usage. Therefore, the reorder point will be calculated as half the order quantity of 12, which is six, plus the safety stock of 12, giving us a reorder point of 18. So every time our on-hand balance plus on order drops to 18 or less, we will order 12 units for replenishment. So the safety stock level is 12, the reorder point is 18, the lead time is one day, and the order quantity is 12. So let's see how the reorder point system works. Day one, we have seven on order and 11 on hand, equaling 18. With this figure of 18, which is our reorder point, we place a replenishment order of 12 due tomorrow, day two. The random demand for today is three. Day two, yesterday we had 11 on hand plus the seven that was received, making 18. We shipped three, leaving an on hand balance of, for day two, of 15. With the 12 on order from yesterday, this gives us a figure of 27, which is well above the reorder point of 18, so no replenishment order is required. The random demand for days for this day is six, which will leave us with an on-hand balance of 21 at the beginning of day three. Day three, the on-hand plus no order due is above 18, so no replenishment order is required. And we continue doing this for the full 35 days using the demand each day generated by the random number generator. Here are the complete reorder point results for the 35 days. You can see we had six out of the 35 days where we had negative inventory and let the customers down with in insufficient stock. This gives us a customer service level of just over 82%, considerably less than the 98 required. Over the 35 days, we had a demand of 299 which gives us an average daily usage of 8.5. Our minimum inventory was minus seven and a maximum of 21 with an average of 7.5. The standard deviation was 4.4, less than the five we used to calculate our safety stock. So we should have done better than anticipated. Here we see the inventory level at the end of each day using the reorder point system. You can see the six days on which we had insufficient stock. Here we have the DDMLP spreadsheet. 
I have copied and pasted the exactly the same random domain generated in the reorder point example into the DDMLP simulation. Starting off with the same average daily usage of six and a lead time of one day, we can start to construct the buffer. We have a very short lead time, so I will use a high lead time factor of 0 0.8. I am unsure about the variability, so I'll use a high variability factor as well of 0 0.7 and see how that works. So the buffer calculation is as follows. The yellow zone is the lead time multiplied by the average daily usage, giving us 6. The green zone is the yellow zone times the lead time factor of 0 0.8, which equals 5, rounded up. The red zone base is the same as the green zone at 5, and the red zone safety is the red zone multiplied by the variability factor of 0.7, giving us about, 0 .3, giving us about 3. So the total red zone is 8. So in the buffer, the top of red will be 8. The top of yellow will be 14, and the top of green will be 19. Let us see how the DDMLP simulation works. The net flow calculation is equal to on hand plus on order minus today's demand. So the net flow for day one works out to be 15, which is above the top of yellow, and no replenishment order is required. Day two, the net flow is calculated at 9, which puts us in the yellow zone, and we need to order 10 to reach the top of green at 19. Day 3 again, net flow is in the yellow at 11, so we need to reorder 8 to get to the top of green. We continue with this process for the 35 days. However, as we move through the simulation, we want to dynamically adjust the buffer. At the end of each week, we will calculate the exact average daily usage for that week and resize the buffer for this new ADU for the coming week. So in this case, we started off with an ADU of six, <clears throat> but at the end of week one, we see the actual ADU was eight. So we resize the buffer for this ADU. So the size of the buffer for week two of the simulation is now top of red 11, top of yellow 19, and top of green 25. And we do this at the end of each of the five weeks. Here we can see the results for the 35 days using the dynamically adjusted DDMLP buffers. Note we did not run out of stock in any day and provided 100% customer service to our customers. This diagram shows the weekly calculated ADU dynamically adjusted buffers and the inventory on hand balance. Note, we did penetrate the red zone on five occasions, which is to be expected, but the buffer always had availability of stock <clears throat> and provided 100% customer service. Let's compare the results from both simulations. For the reorder point system, the service level was below the target of 83%. And the minimum inventory was minus 7, maximum was 21, and the average was 7.5. Total demand was 299 in both simulations, and here we ordered 288 units over the 35 days. For the DDMLP simulation, the service level was above the target of 98 at 100%. The minimum inventory was 4, the maximum 33, and the average was 16. <clears throat> the demand was the same at 299, but here we did order 302, four more units over the 35 days than the reorder point system. But that is not the end of it. Now we can get into some continuous improvement. Looking at the DDMLP run chart, I think we can reduce the variability factor and thereby reduce the average inventory in the buffer. Let us try a variability factor of 0.7. We run the simulation again, and we still have 100% customer service. And the minimum inventory is now 2, with a maximum of 30, and an average of 14. The run chart shows we still dipped into the red zone five times, but maybe penetrated a little deeper. 
So changing from a variability factor of 0.7 to 0.4, we have reduced the average inventory from 16 to 14, a 12.5% reduction in working capital, and still retained our 100% customer service level. So why does DDMRP give us a better result than a traditional reorder point system? Simple. DDMOP right sizes inventory and then dynamically adjusts the buffers to actual market demand. Whereas with reorder point, we generally set it and forget it. So learn more from the Demand Driven Institute, the Demand Driven Technologies, and implement Replenishment Plus DDMOP software. Oh, and by the way, if you want a copy of the spreadsheets I've used here to play around with, contact me at kentitmus, ktitmus at mweb.co.za.